Well, hello, and I just want to welcome you today to our online worship service here at St. Luke Lutheran Church in Cheektowaga, New York. I know things are looking a little different right now. I'm actually in my office recording this. Had some microphone issues, tried to work it out, and it just sounded too bad doing it from the sanctuary. Ordered a new microphone, but it's not here yet. So I just wanted to make sure that this got recorded and this got out to all of you so all of you could worship with us today. So it's a little different. It's a little more intimate. I'm here in my office. There are going to be parts where we're back in the sanctuary. But but either way, I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy that you're joining us for this online worship service today. I want to point out a few announcements for you. And once again, the best place to find out everything happening in this congregation is our website, stluke-buffalo.org. That's St. Luke, one word, S-T-L-U-K-E-Buffalo.org. We to try and update that all the time to give you the latest information. We're still looking for someone who's able to store some decorations for us for VBS. If you're able to do that, just give the church office a call. We'll set up a time where we can drop those off. We need them stored until next summer when we will get VBS going again. We have some events coming up. On Friday, August 6th from 6 to 8, we are doing an event. We're calling it a bike rodeo. We're going to block off the Union Road parking lot. Bring your bikes, your scooters, your skateboards. Make sure you wear your safety gear like helmets and pads if you need that. We're going to have hot dogs. We're going to have chips. We're going to have drinks. We're just going to have games and just, just a nice fellowship time for that. On Friday, August 27th, we are doing an outdoor movie event. That will begin at 7.30 with some games and activities, and then the movie, a family-friendly movie, will begin at dusk. Love to see you for those two events. Once again, we're just planning on getting everything up and going again in September, and this is where I need your help so much. If you can usher, if you can lecture, if you're a member and can do communion, If you can help out in nursery and Sunday school, we just need all those people. We're planning on doing bells and voice again. There's a sign-up sheet there in the fellowship hall, or you can shoot me an email just letting me know that you're going to sign up for bells or choir. Just all these wonderful ministry things that we're going to get going again here at St. Luke in September. So happy that you're here. So happy that you're watching this. We're here to celebrate. We're here to worship. We're here to praise our God. I invite you to join me now as we sing praises to our Lord. Our opening hymn for today is, We Praise You, O God. It's 785 if you have a hymnal at home. Once again, the lyrics will be on the screen. Let's worship our God today. Amen. 
We gather here together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We take a moment now for silent reflection on God's word for self-examination. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given us his own Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in his name, he gives the power to become the children of God and has promised them the Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your beloved Son befriended frail humans like us to make us your own. Teach us to be like Jesus' dear friends from Bethany, that we might serve him faithfully like Martha, learn from him earnestly like Mary, and ultimately be raised by him like Lazarus. Through their Lord and ours, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The wisdom reading today comes from Proverbs 3. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people and you will earn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson for today comes from Colossians 2. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to a new life because you trust the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive for Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Look, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, Dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And let us now confess our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed when we declare, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So my wife, Annie, happens to be the keeper of the calendar at the Schultz house. And the other day we were driving home after visiting her parents and I said, hey, what do we have on tap for the next few weeks? And do you know what? It was jam-packed. I had a couple doctor's appointments. Micah has summer school, football practice coming up. Lily has swimming, cheerleading lessons. We have a graduation party. We're planning on a trip downtown. We're getting ready to take a vacation to the beach. I have meetings at church. This, just, this is just a busy summer in the Schultz household. So what about you? What does your calendar look like? For some of you, there isn't much going on. For other of you, it's, it's jam-packed. Maybe you have something going on every day. And the truth is, I think all of us, at some point in life, have just had moments where we are just busy, filled with things that we need to do. And let me tell you this, busyness, busyness isn't a bad thing. There's things that need done. There's activities that we enjoy and look forward to. There are wonderful times where we get to spend with people and appreciate it. Life and all these activities, they can be a blessing from God. But the question I have as we come here today is who is more important? Your calendar? Or should it be someone else? Let me share a story with you. Some time ago, a pastor and his wife got a wonderful gift from their church for his 25th anniversary in ministry with him. They were going to have a date night. The members of the church got together and they gave this pastor and his wife a gift certificate to the fanciest restaurant in town. And the gift certificate was a valuable one, $250 for both of them to go out to dinner. And so they found time in their schedule. They made reservations to the restaurant. That night, they got dressed up in their fanciest clothes. She even got her hair and nails done. They put on perfume and cologne, the whole thing. The pastor even went and got his car waxed and washed and cleaned out on the inside because they were gonna take it to valet parking and they just wanted it to look its best. And they were so excited about this evening. 
They can never imagine going to this restaurant, but this generous gift from the church allowed them to do that. So they went to this fancy restaurant. They walked in, they were given a wonderful table, candlelight shone all over them. It was just beautiful. And with that gift certificate, they could eat whatever they wanted to. So they ordered the most expensive menu items available, and it was just a wonderful evening that they enjoyed together, and they were just so grateful for it. Well, finally the bill came, and the pastor asked his wife, honey, why don't you give me that gift certificate so I can pay the bill? Her response, I don't have the gift certificate. I thought you had the gift certificate. I never had the gift certificate. Do you know what? Where was that gift certificate? It was at home on their kitchen counter. Here they were. They looked wonderful. Their car was clean. They even smelled good. Everything that they needed. But do you know what? They forgot the thing that they needed the most. The thing that had the most value for that evening. In the book of Luke, we hear the story of Jesus and his disciples. They are on their way to Jerusalem, and they stop by a town called Bethany. It's just outside of Jerusalem, and there they go to visit friends of theirs. It's siblings. Their names are Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And so they stop by, and when Jesus and his disciples stop by, Martha starts to get busy. She needs to plan a dinner for everyone that is there. She wants to make sure that Jesus and all those guests are well cared for. And so she gets right to work. Her sister, on the other hand, she's not helping out at all. Where is she? Well, Luke 10, 39 tells us, her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. Mary is at Jesus' feet, listening to him teaching. Friends, have you been there? Maybe it was a holiday, maybe it was a family get-together, and there was so much stuff that needed to be done. House needed cleaned, food needed made, and no one is helping. You feel like you are doing all the work. How do you feel? You get upset. You get frustrated, don't you? That's how Martha felt. Here she is. She's working hard. She's getting everything ready. She wants to make sure everything is perfect for all these guests in her house. And here she sees her sister and she is not doing anything. And the Bible tells us that Martha finally has enough. She goes to Jesus, Luke 10, 40. Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help. Let me just pause for a moment. I think oftentimes people read this story and they think that Jesus doesn't care about what Martha is doing. And friends, that's just not the case at all. What Martha is doing is important. And Jesus does care about all the hard work that she is putting in. But he realizes that it's just not what's most important. Listen to what Jesus says, Luke 10, starting in 41. Dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. 
Jesus didn't say that the details weren't important. They were. He just said, you're getting upset over the details, but they are not what is most important. They are not what you should be most concerned about. Mary has discovered it. And I'm not going to take that away from her. And what was most important? What should they be most concerned about? Friends, Jesus was sitting in their living room. God the Son, the one through whom and for whom the entire universe was created, was sitting there, teaching them, loving them. And Martha was too worried about the vegetables. Yes, the meal was important. Sure, no doubt everyone, including Jesus, was going to be blessed by what Martha prepared. But what Jesus valued more than what she was making for dinner was that Jesus valued her. Beloved, God always values relationships with him over everything else. Friends, that's the story that is laid out in the Bible, the story of God and what he has done for us. The God of the universe created you, created you in his own image, and he loves you, and his desire is to have an intimate, personal relationship with you. And for those of us who are Christians, for those of us who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ, for those of us who have been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, I think too many times we act like Martha. We get focused on all the details and the details become more important than the Savior. And so let us never let the details become more important than the Savior. I'm not saying that they're not important, but they're not the most important thing. They're not the thing that is most valuable. And so when you are in the busyness of life, when life just gets busy and you have so much to do, don't ever neglect the Savior. Take a moment and be like Mary and simply sit at the feet of Jesus and listen. Don't neglect the one thing that is necessary for the thousands of things that aren't. My prayer for all of you in this season that we are in, where life can just seem to get so busy, let us never be too busy for the one who loves us. Thank you, Jesus. In your holy name, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we, we just, there's so much going on in our world and we're not saying that it's bad. It's good. There are wonderful blessings and activities and friends. There are just things that need to get done, whether it be projects around the house or just simply yard work and cleaning in that matter. But in the busyness, we often neglect what is most necessary and that is you and that is our relationship with you. So, so, so let us be like, like Mary. Let us always stop and be at the feet of the Savior and listen and know that we are loved and cared for. For Lord Jesus, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the worship. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Friends, as we come to the time of prayer, you, you if, if you print out the bulletin each and every week that I attach to the email that's going out, you'll notice that we have a section on prayers. Some of them are, are, are ongoing prayers, people that need long-term prayers. Some of them are just prayer requests that we have coming up each and every week. And I hope that you turn to those. I hope that you look at those and just lift people up in prayer. And the truth is, too often I think prayer lists become gossip lists. And, and that's not what this is all about. We don't know the situation all the time, but God does. And what he calls us to do 
is to come to him in prayer, lifting up people, lifting up their needs, giving praise and glory to him. So would you pray with me today? Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to this time of prayer, Lord, we just, we lift up all those prayer concerns. And the truth is, Lord, we have no idea what is going on ultimately, but you do. And the truth is, that's not our business. What we should do is we should love, we should care, we should comfort, we should support, and we should lift people up in prayer giving them over to you no matter what the situation is, praying that powerful yet simple prayer, your will be done. And so, Lord, I just lift up all the struggles, all the concerns, all the heartaches that, that people are having. May you remind them that you are a God of peace and mercy and love, that you are always with them, that you will never abandon them. And in all we do, we will give you glory and honor because you are the God who loves us so much. Lord, we pray this all in your holy name. As we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, when we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When your calendar gets full, when your life gets busy, realize that that's not a bad thing but it's not the most important thing. We shouldn't be focused on all those details for the sake of what is most necessary. Jesus Christ, the Savior, loves us and cares for us, and so we should always pause and be at his feet listening to his teaching. Friends, receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn for this online worship service today is hymn 686, It is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. I encourage you to worship and sing along with us.
I thank you so much for joining us for this online worship service. I once again apologize for, for the change in venue because of those microphone issues. Hopefully next week we will be up and running again in the sanctuary. But, but you know what? Where we worship isn't what is most important. It's who we worship. It's the heart that we bring to worship. So I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you worshiped with us today. Now go in peace, in service to the Lord. Thanks be to God.